does study him. And three months later, the children of Israel enter into the land, kill him. The text gives us a direct, clear indication of that. Another one that spoke to God prior to the beginning of the law, but outside of the Mosaic covenant, was Job. He's motivated by love of God, and he's used as a good example. He's found 53 times in the Bible, and two different authors use him as a good example. We saw that both in the book of Ezekiel and in the book of James. Well, these 
strike a day of 10,000, than to be able to strike a thousand. And what can you get more with the kingdom? He saw what was coming. He had some sons. But he wanted to sit on the throne, and now all of a sudden, here's somebody who has the heart of the populace. You know Saul is going to die someday. You know that his sons are going to die if he hung up their body and walked a big shot. 
very still again. It says, and the mom, that is, after a while, that is, by and by, they get into the house, and, you know, finally somebody thinks to themselves, you know, Grandma was sick over there. What are we doing? And mom, they tell him of her. That's the gospel of Mark. And thirdly, they had to ask for her healing. He didn't just go and do it. He could have walked into the house and said, all you need is spirits of heart in this house. All you sick people get well. He didn't do that. He's just come from a whole session of healing. He's just come from the synagogue where he could cast out some demons. He walks into the house. Do you think he did not know that Peter's mother-in-law was sick? But he waited. 
That changes the players on the playing field. That changes the values of the equation. That makes certain goal accomplishments are impossible and then sets new goal accomplishments. That comes from the least expected in most cases. That ends current pursuits. That finalizes our opportunities for earning heavenly reward. When you die, you cannot earn any more heavenly reward. Did you get that? You have a limited amount of time. It's like seeing the clock going around. You have the opportunity to run over and grab money. There are two barrels. There's a barrel over here that has $100 bills, and there's a barrel over here that has $100 bills. And you've got one minute to do it. And so can you imagine a contestant in one of these crazy game shows who looks at that and decides, well, it's a lady in this case. She decides, you know, I don't think my makeup is quite right. She pulls out her hair. The bell is sounding. She pulls out her hair. She thinks that we need to fix up a little bit. You know, I'm trying to tell her to look. You never know these little barrels. You never know. But the guy who sits up there and thinks, you know, I would really like these Samson flats. And, uh, oh, let's see. Here, here's a book. And I think, I, I think right now it's sort of running to the money that I'll be on. What about the person who looks out there and he sees there's a barrel full of $1 bills, there's a barrel full of $100 bills, and he runs with the $1 bills? How much should you take in a minute? Is that smart? Which one would you run for? I hope in this crazy game show that you would run for $100 bills. As much as you can pull out the barrel and run for it. How much more are having to reward the work? The things that last forever. All that money is temporal. The pieces of paper were ink on it. But the rewards that God pays for his servants, for having obeyed him, for having loved him, for having served him, things that do not burn up like the wooden gate stubble that Paul talks about in 1 Corinthians, things that are like the gold, silver, and precious stone that last forever in heaven. What are you spending your time trying to collect here on earth? How long is it going to last until you're dead? Death closes the opportunity to earn a heavenly reward. Death puts the final period on the test paper that will be judged by the Lord of all flesh. Death is coming. Don't put yourself in the place of one who must be removed before the blessing of God can come on others. Remember what we just said a moment ago. God removes people who are in the way to make room for the next generation that will obey and serve him instead of obeying and serving their own petty goals and desires. As we're going to see in the next few verses here in the text, sometimes all it takes is the threat of death for God to give directions. Because God is going to threaten to kill Moses in just a few verses in our text. Over what perhaps you might think not as important. God threatens to kill Moses for not circumcising his two sons. Now Moses is obeying God and sending back to Egypt. He's got his wife, he's got his sons with him. But he's never circumcised. But you see, that was a sign of the covenant of the Jewish people. That Moses was going to be the one to lead them out of Egypt. What a bad example he would have been if he had not circumcised his own sons. We'll talk about that more when we read those verses. The second major lesson we learned in our passage before us today is that sometimes God uses death to remove the excuses that we have for not obeying the will of God. God has just spent an extended period of time, and we studied that in these three previous verses, arguing with Moses, and undoubtedly anticipates that Moses will use the excuse of the fear of man to resist going back to Egypt. Remember what Robert says, the fear of man will be the snare, but who shall put his trust in the Lord shall be saved. God says, I'm going to cut that off before most of you can get it out of his mouth. God tells him, go return to Egypt, for all the men are dead which sought by life. It doesn't say some, it says all. It doesn't say most, it says all the men are dead that wanted to get. Basically, God is telling Moses, I'm going to give you a fresh start. Has God ever given you a fresh start? Yes, he has. God's giving you a fresh start to Moses here. He's telling Moses, you're no longer on the most part of this. In fact, nobody can remember who you are except the family. Of course, there were still family members who were alive and brother and sister, but we hear nothing further about Moses' mother and father. We hear nothing more about the two Hebrew slaves who were fighting with Moses trying to stop them. We hear nothing else about Moses from this new Pharaoh when he stands before Pharaoh. The elders of Israel don't remember who Moses is. It's literally a dead. 
Death is not to those in marriage. Death is death for debtors. Death and fear of pursuit. Death separates the hoarder from his fool. Death stops hatred and love and envy and greed. Read the book of Ecclesiastes if you want to see that I have a second one yet. It's a great book to study. I read it every other month in addition to the book of Proverbs and an Old Testament passage and something out of the Gospels and something out of the Epistles. Every day. Every day. It will give you the second one like to get what you need. To see what's important and what is not important in this life. Death 